Hello, my name is Chad Peterson, and I serve as the lead pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And I want to take just a moment to personally welcome all of you to this online worship opportunity. Wherever you find yourself at today, and whenever you are joining us for this service, know this, that you are welcome just as you are for who you are, which is exactly the way that Jesus welcomed people in his ministry. So now we begin our time together as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. we tell ourselves can lead to hope or they can lead to despair. They can motivate us to grow and change or they can lead to a fixed mindset and a stagnated soul. Yes, there is power in the stories that shape our culture and outlook and I do believe that the biblical story can move us in life-giving ways which is why we are committing this program here to explore the story of our faith more widely by reading from parts of the Bible that we often overlook and many people just don't know anything about. <laughs> the story of Ruth, it is a perfect example. The eighth book in the Old Testament, relatively short, going un often going unnoticed, it is a biblical story that does not even mention God, at least directly as a character, and yet this story about two women on the margins has everything, and I mean everything to do with teaching us about God's dream for the world and what it means to belong. But before we go there, I want to set it up for you with a personal reflection of sorts. 
So I am in a role, I, I have a job where I am able to connect with people in a way that I would not otherwise be able to do. People's lives, wow, they're just fascinating. They really are. It, it doesn't matter who they are. I am captivated by people's stories. We are all unique and yet we share a common humanity, which means that while our stories are our own, life experiences that we have, well, they often overlap with, with other people's life experiences. I have learned so much so much about life, about myself, and about what it means to be a human being from being a part of people's lives, taking in their stories and their experiences. After doing this for almost 16 years, there is one thing that I have witnessed over and over and over again. It's an observation that is by no means earth shattering. In fact, I think it's actually kind of obvious but I think it's important to name. To be human means that you do not get to control the outcome of your life or the circumstances of your life. To be human is to experience great joy and great loss and every emotion in between and rarely, I would say actually almost never, does life go the way that you plan or expect it to. <laughs> And that drives me crazy. I try really hard to convince myself that I have control, that I have control over my life, but that is simply an illusion I create that makes me feel better. It's not real. I wish life was like, choose your own adventure books. I grew up reading those. Do you know what, I, what I'm talking about? Do you know what those are? <laughs> For those of you who don't, they are short stories written for kids where a few pages in, a question develops and you have to make a decision. So for example, you get to the end of the page and it says, do you go into the overgrown graveyard to investigate the sound you heard? If so, go to page 20 and continue reading. Or option B, do you ignore the sound, go home and play with your brother? If so, turn to page 37. And of course, you go and investigate the sound in the graveyard. I mean, who would do anything else? But then you do that and you die, <laughs> at least in the story. Yeah, in, in those books, you can make a decision, see how it plays out, and then if you don't like the outcome, or if you're just curious, you can go back and make another decision to see how things would turn out differently. Oh man, I wish life was like that, that it came with that level of control. But life is not like that. When we are surprised by the outcome of a decision or just a circumstance in life, we can't go back and redo it. There isn't another path we can jump on to avoid the one that we're on. We don't have any control over that. When life surprises us, we have to figure out how to deal with it. So let me give you a few examples. I tell all of Bethlehem's middle school confirmation students that when I was in eighth grade, I was not sitting in school just daydreaming about the day when I would be a pastor. <laughs> oh Lord, no, no, that was, that was not what I was expecting. I was not looking for that. And while there are many things I do enjoy about what I do, I was also not expecting that given where I'm at right now, that I would be painted with the same brush as other religious leaders who use their faith to justify violence or intolerance or use their power in ways that are abusive to others. I mean, that was an unpleasant surprise and it's one that I deal with quite frequently. Give you more examples. I, I am not aware of any couple looking to get married who are expecting to get divorced, who are expecting to get hurt, who are expecting that their relationship will not last. But, but it happens. I don't think any of us expected the fundamental changes that have occurred in our lives, routines, work, and schools as a result of COVID. <laughs> 
I think many new parents are caught off guard by how strong of feelings they have for their child, how good it can actually be, and at the same time, how hard it can be when you realize that you can't prevent your kids from getting hurt. No parent expects that their child will struggle from mental illness or disease or bullying, and no parent feels okay when they realize that they have done everything that they can do and what happens next is completely out of their control. Life, life is a combination of joy and loss and much of it you can't control. That's what I've learned from people as I have entered into their stories. That's what it means to be human. And it is what we have to wrestle with and make sense of. And the biblical writers, they know this. They know what it is to be human and they know our experiences. Our focus text today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you." So a story is told about Naomi and Ruth, which eventually finds its way into the Bible. To quickly summarize, here, here, here's the story in a nutshell. There is a famine in Judah, the southern part of Israel, where Naomi, her husband, and her two sons live. No one expected that to happen, but it did, and it's a life-threatening situation. So Naomi and her family are forced to relocate as refugees to the land of Moab, one of Israel's enemies. Again, no one expected that. It's not the place that you want to end up in. It is here, in this foreign place, that Naomi's husband dies, and her sons take Moabite wives. <laughs> For an Israelite woman, this is bad all the way around. I am sure she did not expect her life to go this way, but soon things get worse as then both of her sons die. Now Naomi is left with her two foreign daughter-in-laws with no way to financially support themselves. Naomi decides to return home to Bethlehem and pleads with her daughters-in-law to take care of themselves and to return to their family homes where they might have a chance of marrying again and having a family. But Ruth refuses to leave Naomi, whom she now considers to be her primary family member, despite their different countries of origins and despite religious and differences and despite the usual tension that existed between mothers and daughters-in-law. This is where our reading that we, our focus text comes in that we, that we read. Ruth promises to remain with Naomi. In making such a promise, Ruth defies all conventions and takes an enormous risk. She risks ridicule and rejection from her mother-in-law's people who all hate Moabites. She puts her future in the hands of the God of Israel, hoping that Israel's God will watch over her and show mercy. Ruth lacks any sort of future security. She does all of this, all of this, out of the love for and loyalty to the Israelite mother of her deceased husband. None of this was expected. And so, to all of you who are joining us today, to parents and students and families and, and whoever else is out there, you may not be able to predict the path your life takes. You may not be able to single-handedly steer the direction of our country, to change weather patterns, to prevent droughts and crop failure. You can't make yourself not get cancer. You can't wish it away. You can't force your kids to think like you. You might get divorced. You might have five kids or find out that you can't have any. Your grandchild may excel at school or maybe drop out. Your spouse may get addicted to alcohol. Life is full of joy and life is full of grief and every emotion in between and there is very 
little you can control. That is Naomi and Ruth's experience as well. So how does this story end? What, what happens to the foreign Moabite woman who goes with her mother-in-law back to the land of her enemy <laughs> without any kind of guarantee? Well, she becomes the great, great, great grandmother of King David and in the line of ancestors to which Jesus is born. She becomes part of God's story and serves as a reminder that whenever we are uncertain of where we are in life and feel like things are just out of control, we remember that God accompanies us on that journey and is present in our joy and grief and everywhere in between, that God removes boundaries and barriers so that even foreigners born to your enemy can become included in God's dream for the world. And if that can happen, then anything can happen. I mean, your life may not be a fairy tale. I don't want to say that everything ends well. Some people, it, it doesn't. I mean, life, it won't go the way that you think or want, but no matter where you end up, the God that Ruth places her hope in, this God moves and acts in surprising ways to bring life into the places where we least expect it. So while you will be surprised where your life will take you, know that you're not alone. Know that you do belong. Know that you are seen. And remember the story of Ruth, that in the unpredictable moments of life, God is most especially present. And this is the good news that we hear today because it is the news and the story that gives us hope. Amen. After hearing our focused reading and the reflection on that reading today, here are a couple of reflection questions that you can discuss with your family, that you can journal about, or just think about individually to help you take this story deeper into your own life. So question number one, what is the biggest surprise, whether good or bad, that you've experienced in your life so far? And question number two, how do you deal with the unpredictability of life? 
If today's reflection relates to you in some way and you feel that it would be well received by others in your life, well, we absolutely invite you to please share this with others. Also, if there is anyone who you would like to be uplifted in our public prayers, then please either privately email us or leave their name in the comments and we will add them to our prayers. We do thank you for taking the time out of your busy day and out of your life to watch, to listen, and to be uplifted. Continuing to offer uh, our online and in-person ministries, this is made possible through your support and generosity. If you feel that you are in a place to give of your time, your talents, your treasures to the mission of Bethlehem, you can do so in a variety of ways. You can give of your time to participate in one of the ministries of this congregation, and you can find those opportunities on our website or through subscribing to our weekly e-communication, The Shooting Star. If you are in a place to give of your finances, you can do so through our website, through mailing a check to the church, or by texting a dollar amount to text to give at 320-289-4093 any way, any way that you are able to support the mission of this congregation is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. We join our hearts in prayer as we pray for the church, for the world, and for all people who have needs. We pray, gracious God, we give you thanks for the relationships in our life that mean so much, for the life that is given as we walk with one another down life's unpredictable path. Help us to be there for one another in the joys and in the sorrows of life that we might share your grace, love, and compassion when we need it the most. Gracious God, we pray for your church in whatever form it takes and wherever it gathers, that you would equip us to be your hands, feet, and voice in this world, speaking and acting in ways of love, grace, compassion, and mercy. We pray for all those people, gracious God, who are living lives that are far less than you intend for your good creation. We pray for those who are struggling with addictions. We pray for those who have mental health um, diagnoses, for those who are walking this life all alone. We pray for those who are struggling financially. We pray for those who are sick in their bodies, in their minds, in their spirits. We pray for those who have asked for public prayer this day, including Monica Anderson, Todd Ferguson, Anne Frobenius, Dave Hain, Julie Copperud, Heidi Larson, Kristen Markfort, Brian Erickson, Georgianne Christian, Linda Lokes, Fran Odom, Leah Martin, Richard Metz. Gracious God, we also pray for those people who are near and dear to us, our family and our friends, whose names we now speak in the silence of our hearts. Gracious God, grant all these individuals named and unnamed healing, even if they cannot be cured from what is ailing them. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we pray to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, as you go from where you are right now to re-engage with your community, you, with your school, with your place of work, with your family, take God's blessing with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.